a short introduction to gene expression dynamics. To begin to explore gene expression dynamics, we'll use the FET applet on gene expression. You can find it by searching for FET gene expression basics. Download it and start it running. Here's the opening screen. Let's jump to multiple cells. Here you see a bacterial cell that contains a gene from the jellyfish that encodes green fluorescent protein. It's under the control of a simple positive transcription factor. One of the more interesting things is the graph at the bottom, which shows you the level of the protein accumulating in the cell as a function of time. The first thing you'll notice is that this level is not static. It's not constant. It's noisy. You have a number of controls by which you can control the expression of the gene. These open up with these uh, little buttons on the side. One way we can control the concentration of the protein inside the cell is by controlling the stability of the components required to synthesize it. One of these is the turnover of the messenger RNA that makes the GFP. Different mRNAs have different half-lives, different rates of degradation. We can look at the effect of what happens when we move the rate of degradation from low to high. This means that the RNA is being degraded faster than usual, or faster than the average RNA. And you can see right away that the level of the protein inside the cell is reduced. Let's put it to the middle value. Another way we can control the concentration of the protein inside the cell is by controlling the rate at which the protein itself is degraded. This is the degradation uh, slider here. We can move it from slow, and we can, again, move it to fast. And what we see is that the level of the protein in the cell is reduced. It's worth keeping in mind that changing the rate at which mRNA is destroyed or protein is degraded does not change the rate at which they are being synthesized. It does not, it's not affecting the transcription or translation rates. Up to now, we've been looking at a single cell, which is noisy. But now let's look at a clone of cells. We go up to the slider here. Now we have a clone of cells. Now you can see that the cells themselves are flickering on and off. Each cell is behaving like the cell we were just looking at. But all these cells are genetically identical. They're a clone. What's interesting, however, is that the variation between the cells is going to be washed out in the population. You'll notice that the average protein level per time now is much less noisy. It should be pretty simple for you to generate a good, coherent explanation for why, even though each cell is noisy, the population seems to be constant. Now let's look at what the molecular mechanisms underlying this behavior are. Let's move to the Cell Gene Expression tab. Here's a schematic of a very simple prokaryotic gene with a very simple regulatory region and a transcribed region. We can look at how this gene is regulated. We're going to need to get a positive transcription factor and polymerase bound to the gene in order to begin transcription. When you click on the positive transcription factor, you'll see a hint as to where it should go. If you put the polymerase any place but where the positive transcription factor is, it'll sit on the DNA for a very short while, but then diffuse away. But when it comes in contact with the positive transcription factor, it's activated and synthesizes an mRNA. This mRNA can then interact with the ribosome. Here, shown for simplicity, is pre-assembled, but in fact the small and the large subunits interact with the mRNA independently. Once the mRNA engages the ribosome, it'll synthesize a polypeptide. In this case, we'll think about this polypeptide as the GFP polypeptide. So why is the expression level of GFP in the cell noisy? Let's go to the second tab of messenger RNA production. Here shows you a simulation of what's going on inside the cell. Transcription factors are binding to the DNA in various places. Some bind to it randomly, and they just come back off. Others bind to the regulatory region. And when polymerase binds, an RNA is transcribed. 
Now this process is stochastic and given the nature and level of the number of positive transcription factor proteins inside the cell, what we can see is that it doesn't occur uniformly. It is the stochastic nature of both transcription and the degradation of the mRNA and the protein that leads to the noise we saw in the single cell before. By averaging over many cells, we lose that noise, even though each cell itself still remains noisy. We've been running this simulation with a uh, concentration of uh, transcription factor in the medium range, but a very high affinity. Let's reduce the affinity of the transcription factor for its binding site. Now you'll see it's coming on and off. It sits for a little while. It may or may not be able to activate a polymerase. Again, it's this stochastic nature of, of interactions at the molecular level that will give rise to noise. All right, here's a bit of a challenge. Try and generate a scheme that lowers the noise level of gene expression at the single cell level. Try using the FET applet to test your scheme, or let us know if you need more controls.